Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me again for our second in the artist studio with Construct Our Orlando artist Lemon Press. Um, if for those of you who don't know me, I'm Catherine Page, the curator of art and education at the Manila Museum. And I'm really glad that you're able to join me in my home. Um, and I'm able to bring you Lemon Press and their studio as well. Um, as we're setting up today, I wanted to do a quick shout out for our partners at Little Indies and Wolf's Pub for their custom Apricot Princess cocktail. It is phenomenal. Um, I hope everybody is able to get out and support local, um, support them. They're open from four to eight every um, afternoon for you to pick up uh, drinks um, and support them. So today, before we get started too, um, as you know, as I told you last week, our Construct Our Orlando show was pushed back to open on October 2nd now instead of the summer, which makes it our big fall opener. Um, that also means that our My Relier exhibition is extended until September for you to come see once we open up and we're safe and ready for the public. And our um, American Youth Cause exhibition of our high school artist is also going to be opening October 2nd. And so um, we have eight fantastic artists who are going to be able to show their stuff there as well. Um, as we get started, uh, to give you just a brief introduction to Lemon Press and who they are, a little bit uh, about what I think about their work and what I've written about their work, um, and then we'll get to talk to them about their process and how everything's going in the studio. So Lemon Press is a small publishing and design studio comprised of Anna Cruz and Adam Levine both graduates of UCF Studio Art BFA with focuses in painting and drawing respectively. In their joint practice, Lemon Press consider a multitude of themes around the complexity of the term construct for this exhibition, investigating socio and cultural framing of language and communication, um, inherent visual and representational abstraction, and using minimal and expressive tales from the natural world brought into the gallery. They really draw the viewer in for um, a new search of overlooked ways of perceiving the world, and they employ commingled historically inspired and imaginary and inventive uh, narratives all together. Um, the artists also use zine printmaking in their practice to bring together art making and idea exploration for everyone um, with the intention of really bringing up the creative community within Orlando. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to introduce our artists to you. And if you have any questions, please put them over in the chat and we'll make sure we can get those answered towards the end. Um, but thank you so much for having me and welcome Anna and Adam to the chat. What? Hey Hi. guys. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> thank you so much for having us. Oh, definitely. And thank you so much for inviting us and everyone into your studio space. It's really an awesome chance to get to know you better, to get to know your work um, and see what's been going on. So what kind of things have you guys been looking at and working on today? Well, <laughs> today, um, or to, um, this week, <laughs> um, I've been fossil hunting pretty intensely, so um, I built a sifter today, actually, so I can get some big shark's teeth. But um, other than that, I've been working on paintings and drawings right here in this space. Um, I want to say thanks for that awesome introduction, too. Thanks. Yeah, Catherine. that was a really cool. great recap for um, what we're planning for the show and everything, and um, we're really excited. Um, we. Definitely didn't expect it to go like in October and we've had to like shift some plans and shift some ideas as that's happening. But I think it's all, I think it's all really good and we're definitely thankful to have the time to work on it more and, and think and let the work shift and stuff. Yeah. Very interesting that you get to go with the flow with it and then create during this process. Um, as you guys are creating, is there, um, creative influences that you've been looking at and hunting, obviously, and it's shark's teeth, but um, any books or anything like that? Yeah. Well, I, so I've been looking at a lot of um, Hilma Alf Plint's paintings, uh, Plint's paintings. Yeah. Um, I actually, I, I just bought this book about her yesterday because I, I had just been looking at it in the last couple of months um, while thinking about, 
you know, what we want the show to look like and, and everything and being inspired by that. But it's really cool because she, um, she, as a lot of people know now, she's like very, um, was very ahead of her time and nobody really saw her work until later. But the more I read about her, I, I'm like realizing that um, it's really interesting the way that she like catalogs her ideas into these like shape and symbol systems. Um, and we, as you can see in like the back, we have, we, we created this, I don't know if we should start talking about it now. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, just to back, get back to what we've been reading, um, I've been reading about like aliens and stuff. I've been reading this book by John Keel. Um, he does all these sort of like interviews about people who've had encounters with, uh, cryptids and, you know, alien encounters and paranormal stuff like that so i've been reading a lot of that kind of stuff and that's like kind of typical standard reading yeah. <laughs> in our household but um so abstraction yeah. with home and abstraction yeah. and metaphysical and I actually feel like the connection there to Hilma Afklimt, who was a spiritualist and um her practice was was heavily enwrapped in in sort of her spiritualist practices and she was developing a language and like a codex for the way that she understood the world yeah. in her time. And that is something that we're very interested in. Yeah, it's really cool. She ended up like she had like a, she ended up creating a, like a dictionary of um, what her symbols mean, because, you know, when you look at it first, it looks like a random kind of set of abstract symbols, but there was like a system to what she was working on. And that's what, I have been finding really interesting because when we started prepping for the show, um, we were thinking a lot about like Egyptian hieroglyphics and how, like we watched this documentary about um, when they first found those traces of hieroglyphs, like I think it was like in the Mayan, the Mayan, the, the, yeah, Mayan, the Mayan pictographs and they like the, the process of them, like trying to figure out what those symbols meant within the language was, yeah. has always been really interesting to us. So we wanted to kind of explore that for the show. And that's why we created like a, a symbol system that's based on the alphabet, but has like different um, symbols instead of letters. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is what behind us here is a, it's a, it's a coded system. Um, it's more, it's one part of a two part series and the other part being the, the alphabet itself. So this is the key behind us. And, um, yeah, so we're really interested in, um, puzzles and, and, um, sort of like, like Anna was saying about pictographs, this sort of like puzzle of deciphering what is being communicated. And we really wanted to speak in that way, in this sort of codified Way. And as an artist, how many things can be exemplified within one symbol, essentially? Um, yeah. and, you know, they might be letters, they might be actions, they can be so many different things. Right. Um, just especially the artists and the minimalist artists, that's, you know, what you're getting this narrative across so succinctly as well. Um, yeah. with, with that um, idea too, you guys, what is your purpose for your audience as they're coming into this exhibition? Because you have a very specific purpose that, that you're, you're working on for your audience. Yeah. Well, when we had started thinking about this idea, what we really thought was fun with it, with it is um, like during the show to be able for like the audience to be able to decode on their own, what, um, the messages are so this is like our key but all of our paintings have these like coded messages on them and right now we're calling them fortunes um yeah. and we want we wanted the the audience to take part in like seeing the work by having that process of like filtering through this language that we're like creating within yeah. the show and i think prime a big a big um driving force for us is to create a message that has to be deciphered and without giving too much away um, that references time and human experience and, um, you know, a very specific time frame. Um, and yeah, it was ma mainly we wanted to provide people with a puzzle to solve. That was the most exciting thing to me. And, and I think. Yeah, for sure. 
Well, and like um, just the idea of like construct, and we were thinking a lot about the the year before this all even happened. We were thinking about the year twenty twenty and how it's like such a you know it's 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 a huge kind of milestone for humanity. It's like such a even like the num the number system, and it's like I don't know twenty twenty is like such an interesting year. Um, so we we wanted to capture that that time frame that the show is going to be on and the way that we kind of figured out how we can like use a narrative to depict that is by like thinking about full moons during that time. Um, so we have four paintings of um, based on like the full moon, the full moons during when the show was supposed to be out from May to September. Um, and we wanted them to be kind of like fortunes. I guess we can show that. Should we show it now? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we can. Uh, let me show you guys what those paintings are. Yeah. So, and the moon and the sun, celestial, all of those ideas yeah. too go yeah. along with those. Um, those are uh, those are themes that um, typically we employ in our work. I'm gonna mute myself. All right. Ah, uh, so these are our moons as they're coming along. Yeah, so the, yeah, so um, we have our May strawberry moon. This one is like the September moon, and then this one is the sturgeon moon in August. Um, and yeah, you can see we're really playing a lot with like different shapes. Adam is like such a cool builder, and it's so nice to have um, have him have those like technical abilities to create these like cool shapes with the canvases because it makes painting way more fun when it's not in a rectangle. Yeah, he does really great uh, pieces with or unique canvas shapes that you guys get to play around with in different structures and shapes. For sure. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Should we, should we focus on one, maybe, and kind of give, like, a... Okay. Sure, do you guys want to talk a little bit about, yes, our June moon? Oh, yeah, this is, oh, this is, yeah, this is the late May slash June moon, the strawberry moon. Um, I don't know, it's, like, hard to talk about it because what we're doing is, like, so fluid, I feel like, and now that it's happening, like, in instead of, like, the show being now, being now, it's happening later, it feels like, um, like an archive of like our experiences during that time. Um, so we just plan on kind of like. Yeah. So what I'm seeing, because I saw like an earlier shot before, um, is that this is obviously still a work in progress. Now this painting is being imbued with the time period that exactly. everything's happening. And so you're literally translating that time to that moon, to that fortune, onto that canvas. Yeah, we've definitely had to um, shift like our our process just because of all of that change. But um, I think I think it's actually working. I like how unexpected it is, and I don't know. Yeah, so they're yeah they're supposed to be a little uh, mysterious even, um, and you can see we've we've sort of like put these messages in the paintings um, because. We're both like illustrators and uh, designers. Anna's much more of a designer than I am, but um, we love, you know, symbol and typeface, and we're always trying to put uh, find ways to inject that into our like fine arts work and like painting. And um, that was the idea here: is that we could speak to the viewer and give them a message that they would have to spend a little time to decode and maybe that's a rewarding process is our hope. Absolutely. And they're able to spend the time in the gallery to take their time with the artwork. Um, as, as you know, artwork is meant to be, it's meant to be visually decoded on so many levels and yeah. getting that language in there. That's really cool. So if you guys want to, um, I have one more like question for you too, is um, what really is your the purpose of art for you what do you want um what do you hope art does for your audience sorry technical difficulties 
Um, sorry, what was the question again? So what is um, the purpose of art for you? Like in the bigger general sense, why do you create? Um, what, what do you want to put out into the universe? Well, I, for me, for me, I think it's always just been part of um, how I think. Um, and then going to college, obviously, like it's kind of just I feel like embedded in the way that I express myself to the world. And, and I feel like it's just personally, I learn so much just from the process of what I make, even though there's not even not ever a clear answer to what it seems like I'm making. Um, and then recently, you know, the more that we show work, um, to the public, I think the more it's really becoming um, great to kind of share these ideas with people and like ignite conversations with people and, you know, inspire. I always love when we do artist talks and we have, I have like some younger people who are maybe in college or in high school or something come up to me and say that, you know, the work, you know, made them happy or inspired them in any kind of way. It's, it's, it's a great feeling. It makes it all super worth it, even though it's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to kind of piggyback on that. I mean, we we make art for ourselves. We make art for each other um, because it's it's a really fulfilling thing in our lives. And then we make art for the people. Art is for the people. It's always it always should serve that purpose, in my opinion. Um, it's never supposed to be tucked away and hidden and out of view. It's about sharing thoughts and ideas and igniting imagination and. Um, you know, it's and a it's accessibility. A, yeah, yeah. It's and uh, just this sort of. Um, I think we're both sort of driven to make work, uh, just instinctively. I think it's been such a positive force in both of our lives that we um, we just feel so grateful to be able to share it with people. And that's for me. That's what it's all about: is is sharing. And um, there's so many people in Orlando that helped us get. To where we are now and uh, i wish i could name them all but um yeah it's it's all it's all for them and it's it's all it's for everyone it's for the people awesome yeah and i think that goes a lot <laughs> 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 well in the zine making and bringing that and democratizing that and publishing and, yeah you know having yeah. that for everyone i mean that's i like just i i got into zine making because I met Adam and as soon as I found out about it it's it's just so amazing how zines make and I don't make as many zines now we don't make as many zines now but it's it's the beauty about zine making is it's so like like I said accessible like anybody can make it and there's absolutely no rules and yeah. to think about how painting and art making should always have should always be thought about that way I think it kind of just um like informs the paintings too and and getting people to like be interested in just doing whatever the heck they want um that's always been our goal with, yeah. with the press and as, as like a design studio i guess i mean how, studio, yeah sorry go I was ahead. Gonna ask how do you guys get that that process going your creative process what's yeah. kind of how that how that happens i think it's so funny. It's like so part of our life, especially now that we're our studio. I mean, our studio has always been at home, but now it's a studio and it's a work. It's we both have our jobs, so we work here too. So it's been it's been really interesting. But um, what was the question again? I'm sorry. How do you get motivated to make? Oh, how do you get motivated? Yeah, what motivated? How do you? I think it's just like I think for me, it's always been like a balance. You know, like I can't just. What I'm realizing the older I get is I can't just sit down and make work and not experience life. So I think a big part of, you know, the transformation of our practice is realizing that, you know, there are things that we have to experience and that, that those experiences are what like affects the work. Um, so yeah. I think it's like an exploration. And like Adam said, he's been like sifting and going out in nature. We like love Florida. Florida has always been part of the work and, yeah, that's that's a big part of it. And then like yeah. working together, it's like also conversation has been a huge part of it. And yeah. it's uh, really exciting in that way. We're so lucky we have kind of like a built in just sort of, you know, sounding board and built in network that we can always we can always play off of each other's um, inspiration and just kind of like we feed on that energy for sure. But um, 
yeah, I think Anna made a good point about it being just, it's another part of life. It's one of those things. If you're, if you're experiencing life and you're inspired, then, you know, that'll inspire you to make work. But, um, yeah, I think it's also about discipline. Uh, we're both, we're both studio artists, um, with, with degrees. Um, and if they, you know, if you don't have discipline about your studio practice, um, then large chunks of time go by without any sort of growth and development. So it's, I think it's important for artists, especially young artists, which I still consider myself to be disciplined about, um, you know, primarily drawing for me, just always trying to make drawings and making that a, and making that a part of my life and my schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Good, good. Well, is there anything that um, our guests have in Facebook Live who have any questions? I know I got one earlier about um, how difficult is it to stretch those canvases, Adam? <laughs> oh, and I can speak to that too. We stretch them together. It's impossible alone. You have yeah. to like pull so hard because like when you pull, there's like those creases that happen because it's like angled. So you have to just pull yeah. really hard. So usually he pulls and then I staple, I staple. Yeah. Teamwork is, the, is key for us. Definitely. It yeah. makes, makes things much easier, but yeah, the challenge is part of the fun for sure. It's like the more challenging the shape is and the harder it is to figure out where to pull and how to get, and then it's so satisfying once it's stretched. So it's really funny too. We've, I've been painting on rectangles my whole life. And now that I'm painting on these shaped canvases, I'm just like, I don't know how things are supposed to be organized because it's like such a different yeah. plane. Like a different <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You have to really make sure. I know you talk a lot about layers in your work too. And so getting those layers into that different plane. Yeah. Mm. And I think it, for me, it, it has a lot to do with uh, creating an object, the objectness of painting kind mm -hmm. of from the ground up and being involved in the whole process not really leaving it up to chance to have someone else fabricate a canvas for me that I might resent just based on because I didn't <laughs> make it, you know, like, cause it's yeah. like, yeah, I like to see my own craftsmanship like in the, in the canvas itself. Yeah. We actually, like, there's some paintings that we were showing you guys that like those two circles that we have, we haven't painted on because we're like just so in love with the object, like a yeah. yellow round, like, canvas right now it just feels enough to just look at and be like that is like a beautiful perfect round circle that's painted yellow yeah. <laughs> um the craftsmanship noma off um i think they they the, they provided a link and they did find the right artist but mm -hmm. uh, she also has a there was a guggenheim documentary on youtube that's pretty it's about 15 minutes long that's just like so informative and awesome so if you want to know more about Hilma Offklint or Offklint, uh, go to the Guggenheim or whatever. Yeah, her life is very fascinating. Yeah. We've had a really big retrospective there, so yeah. I, I know. <laughs> I wish I could have seen that show. It's so yeah. Cool. yeah. So I've got a couple questions coming for you guys. Okay. Um, Gisela, do you both agree on the meaning of each symbol, or do they mean different things to each of you? Oh, that's an interesting. Question. Well, it's funny because we don't really give each other rules when we're painting. Like, we've actually never really painted on one canvas before this, so that that's very different from um, how we used to work, because we would just kind of work simultaneously on two different paintings, but now that it, there's, like, a combined symbol system, it's, it's um, I actually think that the symbol system makes it a lot easier for us to work together, because we have, like, something to base off of, and which is also why we started with these paintings, because we just wanted to have that in place, and figure out like what narratives come out of it yeah um we don't we we definitely um don't disagree on the meanings of symbols and uh i think this kind of speaks to why we work together well as a team is because we're all, always sort of interested in why the other arrived at this particular reason for for applying the symbol so um yeah, I, you know, it'd be funny if you asked us individually, like, what is this one? Why is this yeah. the symbol for H? Well, you know, why is this the symbol for N? Well, well, if anything, I think it's, like, just, like, when I was saying earlier about the conversation, that's why it's, like, such a new, I mean, we've been together for a while, so it's not that difficult, but, like, 
conversation is such a big part of it now because even though we are giving each other um, like the freedom to do whatever we want, we're still talking through it every every step of the way and kind of figuring out like, okay, where are we at? Like, how do we want to, you know, move forward? Yeah. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. That's Anna's brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Zach, you're out there. I think that went to Dave's question too with if there's any disagreement and creativity and how you get past that in your flow. You guys sound like you're really good at speaking with each other and moving through it. I mean, we're, we're human beings too, and communication is just like the, uh, all of this work is about constructing a way to communicate. And like that's something I think that that's just such a normal human experience to be like. I can't communicate <laughs> exactly what I'm trying to say. And I think that's normal for everyone, you know? Um, yeah. It's just like being open-minded and like learning about what listening is a huge thing. Like yeah. you really have to take in what the other person is saying to kind of figure out like what the hell they need. <laughs> yeah. And that jumps on to Roberto's question too. And he's like, what do you think if people are going to interpret these symbols differently than the way that yeah. you you put them out there to be interpreted. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the point. Yeah, yeah, we we actually create these like 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 we narrative is always going to be part of the work, but we always it's always an open narrative. There's never like this is the story that this painting is about. We for us, it's, it's a lot of it is just like learning how the symbols are interacting together and and having the audience just kind of figure out what that means. Cause I've always been in the mindset that whatever, whatever you put out, like once you're finished with the painting, like that's out into the world and you have like no control about what everybody's going to think about that. And I've always been kind of, well, not always, but I've now that I'm like a little bit more of a mature artist, I'm a lot, a little more accepting and just kind of open to whatever people say about it. Cause yeah, I mean, it's like, whatever somebody thinks it is, is what it is. That's, it's, it's as simple as that. Like it's, exactly. it, we can tell you, and it's almost like we're tell, we're trying to tell you with the paintings, what we think it is and what we think it means, but. We don't even really know. How yeah, to yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> Translating don't. it though too. Yeah. And having that different conversation, conversations yeah. on other levels, and multiple that, meanings. Um, Things can have multiple meanings. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And what I've always liked about, well, what I've always liked about even just Adam's work is like the sense of wonder that you get from the work because, like, it's so. I feel like my work do, does that too, where it's like so cryptic, but it, it speaks like this, like specific kind of language that you're not exactly sure, like, what they mean. But that's, I think, for a lot of artworks, that's like what makes it interesting is when you're questioning things and when you're, you're just thinking about what it could even mean right yeah it's like poetry like yeah. who decides what a poem means yeah yep the reader exactly. the reader <laughs> <laughs> scholars <laughs> later much later yes um i had another question too about let's see um back up here um a lot of people have tended to get really creative in challenging and traumatic times. Do you think the pandemic has create, um, contributed to your creativity? I love that question. Yeah, I guess <laughs> it's, that's relevant. It's so, it's been so weird because we were like, we had like a game plan. Like we were so excited about the show. We had a game plan. We had like these ideas that we wanted to make and, I think just as we were like ramping up to kind of finalize what those ideas were, this all happened and everything just kind of like all the ideas just kind of like dropped off and dispersed into mm -hmm. like little pieces that I couldn't locate. <laughs> um, so yeah. what I really like during this time is being like forgiving to myself about like, if I don't draw today, that's okay. If I don't paint today, that's okay. And then also just doodling has been huge for me. We have been like going out to parks and drawing and like not having any rules or even ideas relating to the show because to have that like fluidity has been really a kind of a game changer for me. It's, it just, 
it made me more open with what I was trying to make. And I think now I, I have like a better, um, I'm just a little more open about what the paintings could look like in the end without knowing what. That's what I was going to say. You all seem freer and more open to, yeah. to reacting to what's I happening. Would, I would yeah. say initially it was almost, it was, it just, I couldn't work on anything for this show when this initially happened. It, it completely took my mind off of the show. I mean, it was just um, not that I, not that I stopped making work or not that I stopped. I just started making other things because it was like the uncertainty of everything just made it so hard to say like, this is what I'm planning on happening tomorrow, next week, next month, anything. It was just like all up in the air. So yeah. I think creatively, um, you know, we continued to make work, but it was it like Anna was saying, it sort of broadened like what we felt like we could be working on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so we're at 630. We're a little bit over 630. So I want to thank you guys again. Yeah. Um, but we do have some more questions in, in okay. the comments. I want to go back and check those out. We've got some from Boris, some more from Roberto and Dave. But um, um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for helping me. Um, I want to make sure that everyone follows Lemon Press over on Instagram. You can follow the Manila Museum over there, too, and again, here on Facebook for information about everything that's going on um, with the exhibitions, with the reopening. Uh, you can become a member by to support us. We've got shirts on Orlando merch and a newsletter to keep up to date with everything we're doing. So um, thank you again, Anna and Adam of Lemon Press. You guys are oh, awesome. Sure. Can we just, uh, I just want to shout out Don Remix and say hi to Don. Yeah. Um, looking forward to meeting Don and uh, just his work was awesome. It's so cool to see like inside his studio and stuff too. Yeah, we're so excited to be in a show with him. He's, he's such a, a great treasure for the community. And I also want to thank everybody who has watched. I don't know how many viewers we have or whatever, but I'm glad we <laughs> have a lot of comments. We're just really, can't thank you enough. We love having support from our friends and our family and we wouldn't be as inspired to do this if it weren't for you guys. Yeah. And thank you, Catherine and Emily yes. and um, Shannon, everyone at the Manello has, has been amazing. And it's just, it's really been a pleasure working with all of you. Yeah. And we're happy to show you guys and bring your work to the community and get your voices out there and have these conversations. So thank you so much for inviting us in. Cool. Thank, thank you. you guys. Take care, everybody. Bye.